Hello, welcome to day 19 of learning ML from ChatGPT. So let's get started. So yesterday's, in yesterday's lesson we learned about Q networks. So we basically have Q table, and then we like work out a certain number of um, Q value pairs, which is the state and action, and then the Q value, which is quality value, like um, the reward it gets for doing that. And then once we've got enough of them, we can train a neural network on it using some dense layers, and then predict the other ones, which is more computationally efficient on larger data sets. So let's continue and do day 19 this lesson. In the past few times, like ChatGPT has given, been giving us some dodgy code. It doesn't work. Okay, please give me day 19's lesson. So auto encodings, auto encoders, and anomaly detection. Auto encoders applications in anomaly detection, implementing an auto encoder for anomaly detection in TensorFlow and PyTorch. Okay. Let's get started. This should only do uh, TensorFlow. Assignment is an auto encoder to detect anomalies in the data. The thing I don't like about uh, ChatGPT's way of doing things in a minute is. The assignment is just what it's already given us, so yeah, there's not like many question, quiz questions. I may ask it to do like a uh, like give three questions at the end to uh, consolidate my um, knowledge. So concepts: autoencoders. Autoencoders are a type of neural network for, uh, used for super, unsupervised learning. So this is um, reinforcement learning. They aim to learn a compressed representation, encoding of input data, and then reconstruct the original, original input from its compressed representation. Autoencoders consist in two parts. Encoder maps the input, input data into a lower dimensional latent space. Decoder constructs the input from the decoded representation. Okay, so it just learns a compressed representation and then reconstructs it. Uh, the original input. Okay. So the applications in normal detection autoencoders are trained to recreate normal pattern data patterns accurately. One further anomalous data they failed to reconstruct oh okay. That reconstruct it well uh, resulting in higher construction errors. This is this difference between the reconstructed and original data is used to detect anomalies. I see, okay. That's a yeah, that's an interesting way to go about it. So code examples, implementing an autoencoder for anomaly detection. Below is an example of implementing an autoencoder in TensorFlow to detect anomalies. So here we're using the MNIST data set, which is, if you remember, digits 0 to 9. And uh, just uh, images are uh, um, like handwritten, and then we can like, predict. Next drain as type float. Okay, it's test. Also, reshaping into. Okay, this is. Uh, flattening the data for the uh, autoencoder and we're splitting it like we've done many times before and we're building the encoder so um, layers dense so our input layers are 128 and then 64 and then 32 and then so you can see this is going from a high number of neurons to a low number so this is encoding it then decoding low to high okay so these are all ReLU, so if it's negative, just spits out zero, uh, return zero, otherwise it just spits out the number. Okay, so then decoded, we had the ReLU activations for the first two, and then like the final one is the sigmoid, which uh, is the, it just gives the, um, for, it's for binary classification, so this is, uh, whether it is anomalous or isn't anomalous. So yeah, it gives that um that like percentage. Also encoder. Uh so we're using Keras model and put the outputs decoded and we can value it using Adam and the mean squared error loss, which is punishes um like anomalies but doesn't punish as much the other ones. But like normal ones. Auto encoder. Okay, input shape equals x train input shape, auto encoder, build encoder, input shape. When we're fitting the model, this is where we basically train it. Reconstructions, auto encoder dot predict. Okay, uh, and then we'll see the mean squared error is the mean of the power, so this is the square bit. 
uh, to Exeter Summer's reconstruction. So here we're just doing it manually. I think normally we have the uh, inbuilt one that's for SS1 threshold. We want 95%, otherwise it's an anomaly. That's for examples, anomaly is equal to MSC is greater than threshold. Block examples, so here, look, the data reconstruction of anomalies, and for every uh, one in number of examples, we're plotting the uh, uh, the data. So yeah, okay. Um, yeah, we just uh, change the original and reconstruction. Anomalous. Okay, and then we just okay. I'll copy this code. Oh, for some reason it reverted back to giving uh, the PyTorch task user uh, or provide auto encoder model to detect anomalies in the dataset of your choice. You can use datasets like MNIST, KDB Cup 99, dataset for network intrusion detection, sensor data for detect detecting mechanical failures. Train an auto encoder on normal data, use the reconstruction error to identify anomalies in unseen data. Experiment with different thresholding techniques to improve anomaly detection accuracy. Okay, now let's paste this into our Google Colab. And let's see if this runs. I don't think this will take, actually, thinking back, I think it did take a bit of time. Okay, we're just importing TensorFlow at the minute, uh, which is where the green arrow is. So, oh, we're now getting the loading the MNIST dataset, and we're now um, just training the model, which may take a while. Oh, yeah, we've got 20 epochs with batch size 56. Yeah, this may take a while. Okay. Okay, so now uh, we can just recap what we've done from the start whilst we're waiting. As I'm just going to look at the... So, I'll just try and uh, like explain like these concepts that we've seen so far. So, what is ML? So, supervisors, when we have labeled data and we're like... So, we have linear... We can have linear regression models or a neural network. As supervised learning, we normally have different uh, algorithms that we use. So, for example, well, minimax, we haven't actually covered this yet, but this is an example. And also the key value pairs, um, unsupervised, so reinforcement learning. Okay, uh, so we're learning regression, you need to skip it, learn. Okay, yeah, so this linear regression and logistic regression. So, linear regression is finding the line of best fit that fits through like a t 2D. Well, actually, I don't think it has to be 2D, it can be three dimensional. Um, so finding the best line of fit and logistic regression slowly fine choose tunes the um, gradient, uh, so the weight and the bias. The bias is like the y intercept, I think. So data processing, so data cleaning, normalization, one hundred coding, train test split. Okay, so data cleaning, I think, is when we have bits of our data that aren't present, which would, if we just pass this to a normal data set it would not um, work as planned. Normalization, I think it's converting every bit of data into a specific range, one hot encoding. So say we had a feature in our planned data frame, which was cities, and it was like Chicago, New York, Tennessee, that's the state. I'm not good at um, US and cities, uh, Washington. So then we'd have city underscore Washington, city underscore um, New York, like that. That's one hot encoding. We have one for whether it is for that um, specific um, uh, column, whatever it's, no, not row. Um, then train test split is where normally we have like 20%, um, like for the tests of the data set and the rest 80% for the training. Pre processing, okay. And overview of TensorFlow, okay, we've done that. Linear regression with deep learning uh, framework. So with TensorFlow, it's a sequential model and Oof, what is it? Let me go to day four. Control find day four. Okay, let's see. Uh, so how do we do it? We yes, sequential layer. Okay, we just have one dense layer. 
uh, units one in pitch shape. Yeah, because the it's one because it's like just this one's going to be two dimensional, and yeah, it's just the new version. Okay, let's go back up to day five. Logistic regression, uh, classification, logistic regression, classify handwritten digits. I'm just using uh, logistic regression, so I'm just going to do day five. Let's see the code for this. Okay, so we're having, yeah, uh, so, oh, so softmax again, this is when we have, so MNIST data set, we have nine, um, or well, 10 digits, not through nine, and then softmax gives a probability for zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Gives the probability for that, and whichever has a probability, highest probability, we pick that one. Uh, so in our sequential model, we have a dense layer, with 10 input units because um or well, 10 units because um it's just 10 different digits the input shape 748 is because um it was an image it was like I can't remember, uh, 20 by 28 or something and then we have to compress it in order for the model to understand it and then we sgd is oh was uh stochastic gradient descent because uh, we're doing the new version here and we did categorical cross entropy and we did accuracy as the metrics so we're just fitting the model there wait let's just check on this one. Oh, let's go um seven seven two two one one reconstructed okay you can see they're a bit blurry on the bottom hand but they are still the accurate uh, reconstructions. So our loss is extremely low here. 0.0116. Okay, that's very good. So yeah, I think that's all for today's lesson. So we didn't actually find any anomalous uh, results here because it's such a widely used data set that uh, this can, they're just going to be removed the uh, anomalies and yeah okay so just to recap so here we're using MNIST and then we're using autoencoders uh, for anomaly detection so we basically encode our data set then we reconstruct the data set and if we ha have any errors in reconstructing the data set we know that we have an anomaly and for here the cutoff was like 95% yeah, uh, as the uh, mean squared error. Okay, so yeah, uh, that's a quite simple lesson, but a very fun one at least. And so yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. And I'll recap the um, uh, later like lessons uh, maybe tomorrow. May have recap uh, tomorrow as well on video. So yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.